Hey, what's up, BFL fam? Carlos here. Welcome back to Brooklyn Fragrance Lover. Today, I just want to do a quick video to tell you guys where I've been. I haven't put out any content since previous Sunday, not yesterday, but the previous Sunday. Something happened, something really scary happened. So last Tuesday, I got some bottles in the mail and I was going to smell them. I go to spray one of them and I can't get my finger down on the sprayer. I just couldn't. It was like my hand froze. So I tried it with my right hand and it worked just fine. Later in the day, I went to spray something else. This time I used my right hand and I wasn't able to spray the, the perfume. I just could not put my finger down. So I went about my day. I didn't think much of it because once in a while I do get like a little arthritis and um, a little muscle pain here and there. So I didn't pay much attention to it. That evening, I was watching something on Netflix, uh, Ratchet. If you guys haven't watched it, it's a great program. It's about a nurse, this crazy nurse. It's the prequel to uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Anyway, back to my story. So I'm watching the series. I watch about one, two. It's about one o'clock in the morning and I want to get something to drink. I was a little dry, I wanted to get some iced tea or something. I go to get up and I fall. I'm like, what the hell was that? My feet just totally gave out from under me. I try to get up, I stand up and then I go to walk and I fall again. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? You know, I, I wasn't drinking, I wasn't, it was just random no control of my legs and I was falling. This was like one o'clock in the morning. So I turned off the computer. I went to go lay down and said, maybe by the morning it'll go away or something. I'll take a couple of Advil. But before I went to bed, I tried to stand up and I, I just couldn't. I just, I would fall on my face again. It was bad enough that I already fell at like one o'clock in the morning when boom, my whole body must have, like my neighbors must be like, what the hell's going on up there? So. Uh, yeah, so I wake up the next morning. Let's see. I go to get up. Can't go on my feet. I can't go on my feet. So I try, I try, just can't do it. So here I am crawling. I had to go to the bathroom. So I crawl to the bathroom and I can barely get myself up to go. But I finally did and um, was a little bit of a mess to be perfectly honest. But, you know, I just... I couldn't help it. I uh, go back to bed, crawl back to bed, and I post on Facebook. <laughs> what do I do? Instead of calling the emergency room, I post on Facebook. I post, and then all of a sudden, I get these all these messages. You better call the emergency. It could be this, it could be that. So I'm like crying because I get all nervous and panicky. So I called 911. I knew that I wouldn't be able to let them in. The uh, ambulance here, they use the uh, fire department. So I crawled, by the way, I have two gigantic scrapes on each knee from crawling around the apartment and my cats are looking at me like, what the hell's coming on? What's wrong with you? They actually were a little scared and they, they kind of ran away and hid. So I go to crawl to the door and I try to get myself up to unlock the door so it's open so they can come right in so I don't have to crawl and not be able to open the door. I'm, I'll be ready for them. That was a whole ordeal trying to get myself up, up, and then I couldn't squeeze the lock. I'm like, oh my God, it took me like 15 minutes, but I finally got the lock open. I went, laid down on my bed, and uh, yeah, they came. I said, they knocked, they said, it's open, come in, come in. They came in, I was totally, totally immobile. I couldn't walk, I, I, could, I could feel my legs, but I, I couldn't walk on them and I couldn't squeeze my hands. It was really, really scary. I don't know what the hell was going on. Am I having a stroke? Am I dying? Am I, 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 I don't know. It was just very, very scary is all I can say. So they had to help me get dressed. They got my t-shirt, they fed my cats for me. I didn't know how long I was going to be in the emergency room. So they put a lot of food, left a lot of water. They gave me my shirt, they got my wallet, my keys. They strapped me up in the chair to get me out of the apartment. He locked the door for me, then they put me on a gurney and took me into the ambulance. My neighbors are like, what the hell's going on? I'm like, whatever. So they get me to the hospital 
they leave me off an emergency. They try and ask me, can you pick up your leg? I can't pick my leg. Come on, try. You can do it. I can. I can. My, it was like dead weight. My legs were like dead weight. They take my vitals and they take me right into a scanning room. They did a scan, a head scan, and a, it was a head scan because they were looking to see if I possibly might have had, God forbid, a stroke. They did the test. They tried to make me stand up. I couldn't. He was like, come on, you can do this. Like, I can't. I cannot. And um, so then those tests finished. They did some blood work. About an hour later, they put me in a room. An hour later, they told me that it wasn't a stroke. Thank God for that. But I was very, very low in potassium. My potassium level was 1.7. Average, normal um, potassium level is 3.5 to 5. I was at 1.7, and that is dangerously low. It affected my muscles, and that's why I couldn't move. Had I not called an ambulance, I could have possibly had a heart attack because, um, you know, uh, potassium is an important function of the whole body, the electrolytes and all that stuff. So what do they do? They start pumping a whole bunch of potassium into me. They told me it would be four, three or four tubes. And mind you, the intravenous of um, potassium that burns, it, it's like boiling water being put into your skin. It was completely uncomfortable, but I had to do what I had to do. They, they put a few. It took about an hour each bag. Then they took me into a room, my own room. They continued with the IV. I couldn't go to the bathroom. They needed urine. So the nurse had to help me go to the bathroom. So embarrassing, but uh, yeah, I was totally helpless for the first night that I was there. Overnight, they're putting more potassium, more potassium. In the morning, I wake up. I can walk Miracus, miraculously, excuse me, I could walk. I mean, I was a little uneasy because my muscles were all tight, but I was able to walk and I was like, yeah, I, I said, I'll get out of here soon. In my head, I'm thinking, but they ran all kinds of tests, blood work, blood work, this and that. My diabetes was acting up. I was a mess and I had to be monitored. I went in Tuesday, this was last Tuesday, and I thought that I would be out by maybe Wednesday, Thursday. No, I was released today, which is Monday, Columbus Day. It was such a scare, and I, I am so fortunate that I have all you guys, everybody on Facebook. I got so many encouraging prayers and positive words. I, I, I cried. I just couldn't. You know, I'm here. I can't move. I'm reading all the comments. Everybody was being so beautiful to me and sending a lot of love and energy. And um, it felt really good. So thank you all for the positive energy. And uh, yeah, I'm here, I'm standing. I don't need any help to go to the bathroom. Um, I'm gonna have to make some major life decisions going forward. I'm not 32 anymore. I'm gonna be 57 next March. I have to eat properly. I have to eat things that are sensible for my diabetes or I'm just going to wind up in the emergency room again if I don't change my ways. I know I can do it. When I went for an operation January 2019, they told me when they were doing the pre-op testing that when they did the uh, heart uh, EKG that I had some heart attacks but I survived them, obviously, but it could have been 10 years ago, five years ago, but there was something irregular on my EKG, the thing that spits out the form with the, the waves up and down, it was messed up. So at that point, I said to myself, that's it, I'm not smoking cigarettes anymore, and I haven't smoked since January of 2019. You know, I've had my problems through the years with substance abuse, and I'm 20 something years clean. If I make up my mind to do something, I can do it. And uh, yeah, so no more uh, fried manigotto or whatever, fried raviolis is gonna have to be boring salmon, boring vegetable, but seriously on the real, I don't mind it. I feel so much better 
after being in the hospital for a week. I mean, I didn't enjoy being there, but they nursed me back to health. It was three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it was always balanced, never too much food, and it was it was just fine. I, I do great, I feel great. I don't have that excess feeling of eating too much meat or too much fried foods, and I mean, I love that stuff, but um, like I said, there has to come a time in your life where you have to uh, think about the consequences. If I want to stick around doing BFL videos for a long time, I'm gonna have to uh, buckle up and uh, get my shit together. Again, thank you all so much for your light and love. It means so much to me. I appreciate it and I don't take it for granted. I'll be back with content on a regular basis now. And uh, yeah, thanks for listening to my little scary story here. Hope you guys are great. And until next time, you take care, stay blessed. And I'll see you at the next video.